But uh, you know what? I'm I'm really glad that we uh, you know like I'm really into nothing, and uh-huh. uh, I'm glad that we sort of like given it a new new approach tonight. You know, add mm-hmm. some new sounds and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because it's, it's 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 one of those songs that oh hang on. Oops. Does that he, would, does he know where he's going? Oh, he's there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were supposed to be talking we, about we, shit we, right and here. We, we got like uh, uh, tripped up on the wires. That's fine. <laughs> Fail. Yeah. I'm really, you know hey. what? Hey. Uh, we're, we're playing. Uh, okay. And yes. I'm there. He's I guess that the nature of the universe is creative, so everyone is a creative. But I guess the conscious choice to create or put energy in certain places or create things. And I guess if you're talking about art making, for instance, it's also energy work in a way. Like it's a processing technique, I think, of experience. Reproduction feels good, so that it happens, so that it will happen, you know, these things have like checks. For like us to find beauty in, say, works of art means that we're on the right track. It means that that's probably for the higher evolution. I mean, all of these things can kind of collapse on themselves, but if you could just go with me on that one, then. <laughs> This is very, very sad because from my perspective you should at least try to keep like the soul of the uh, city or the vibe of the city or whatever. Even if it's like a super modern building or whatever that will be built in some empty space that should at least try to cope with the area itself. For example, if, this, if you see this corner up there, this is actually where I live. This is like about six or seven years ago. Nowadays, there's a Liebeskind building standing there. Some people might like it, I don't. It looks like a spaceship put in this corner to make super, super fast money. This is just an uh, example for what's happening with this city and also with San Francisco. And I'm trying to keep these moments in time alive. I think in 94 was the first time when I went to San Francisco. Do you have a um, home there? Well, <laughs> I call San Francisco a home away from home, but no, I, of course I don't, because I don't shit money, you know what I mean? San Francisco is, as we all know, um, unpayable. <laughs> San Francisco is not American, and Berlin is not German, you know what I mean? They are like very, very open cities. This, this environment in a small school. I think it's very nice, it's different. You know the UDK, the big university? You go inside and you feel very, wow, it's, it's an old big building and you feel very small, like a small student and then you go here inside and I think it's a, it's a different feeling. Maybe you're more like, I'm on the same level like everyone else. We have one person every time that shows their work and then we talk about it. It's nice because now it's warm. And also in winter I go without shoes and then my feet are black after that. There's my tutor, I think he's wondering what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I think when you do art, you are an artist. It doesn't depend on what you study, it depends on what you're doing. So yes, right now I would say yes, I'm an artist. you don't have to study art but you knew so much new things and get inspired when you are here I mean look at this this is full of energy and full of ideas it's nice to to look at people who are working you know
Craigslist. We met, we met Craigslist. It was a, like, yeah. It was a long time ago, actually, now. What, like a couple years ago? Almost three, three years ago. Three years ago. Two and a half. I had some guitar songs, and I, the idea was like, okay, I want a producer, and blah, 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 and someone to realize. And then I listened to John's stuff, and I was like, this guy seems great. Because he had experimental stuff. I liked his whole style and everything. We worked up a show over a while. He ended up getting like a. Um, yeah, Native Instruments Machina. It's like a Berlin, Berlin based, Berlin based company. Uh -huh. so one of the one of the best yeah. live shows I saw here was was a no, noise night. It was maybe a dozen acts. Everyone just plugged in for like ten minutes, played their shit. You know, uh, blew everyone away. It's very intense. Yeah, actually, crowd. I think that's where we overlap most. Is like more like noise. Uh -huh. so basically, only listen to yoga music like at home. Screamo yoga. No, but I like, just listen to yoga music. But but when I listen to Could screamo, like or like our heart, like just like really intense stuff, it can be like metal stuff. I can understand. Like there was a band at, at uh, Loophole, and they just played, you know, like a wall of sound, and I find that really relaxing. Mm -hmm. Hello. <laughs> This is Anna, a friend of mine working in, in, in the entrance. You want to come in? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> hey. What are you doing? An interview. <laughs> that's my friend Anna. It's nice to meet you. You're on camera right now. Oh, okay, I hope that's okay. So this is Urban Nation Museum of Urban Contemporary Art. I don't think we have enough time to show you everything. And with a collection which has blown me away and I think you as well. This is my piece in here. This is the building about five, five to six years ago. This is how it looked like by that time. Art is the most important thing for me. And art connects people and art br builds bridges. Yeah, pathetic, but fuck it. It is as it is. I think every person should at least try to have some artistic outcome. Whatever that may be, I don't know. So I've kind of tried to work this into a science. When I went to Vietnam, I really tried to design my schedule in a way that made the most sense for how I could open up creatively. So I had like three classes in the mornings. Um, every morning and that ended up being enough to support me while I was there and then I had a yoga class in the middle of the day and then I just decided to go home for three hours every weekday and just work on the songs and just see what happened but like have my guitar and have that intention and not go to lunch or like go drinking or let the day kind of like go its own course. That was a huge triumph for me, because after several months, I had these first 10 songs. And they were, they had different parts, and they fit together, and it all worked, and they had lyrics, you know. Now that I do yoga, I would say six days a week. It's a creative tool, it's a life tool as well. It makes me a lot more open, or allows me to be, and opens up the breathing just releases a lot of you know static that can get in the way and that static can be like doubts or um, worries it can also be like bodily pain or just feeling cloudy in your mind and at first I think it can be like it can seem like a big time commitment which is why people might not be initially drawn to it because they're worried about having enough time but it it just makes the quality of everything you do so much richer for me and, um, and so much more enjoyable. Like having a good night's sleep, you know? How do you know that? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a piece. 2013, I guess? That was shown in, uh, in the Urban Art Gallery in Salt Lake City, Utah. I was working on a piece, a statue, 
with my friend Elmer Presley from the city. We put this in the halo, surrounded by money. Uh, we built a god that includes so many religions and stuff, and we, we've been shown that there. We won a prize for that, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. So where I mainly write is just at home. I guess it takes a, a safe space. Sometimes if I ride my bike, like some people talk about this as well, the rhythm of riding your bike or sometimes walking can generate ideas. In German, we have a very nice word. It's called Schaffenskrise. <laughs> I like it very much. It means that you have a crisis in your art process. It's very nice actually when I go to galleries um, because then you get very inspired when you see paintings of or drawings and then, then you think, okay, now I, I, have, I, have, I have to work. Sometimes that's the best thing you can do when you have a Schaffenskrise. Normally, yeah, I wait until it's over, but it doesn't mean that I don't work in this time. It's just a bit harder and I work slowly. Yeah, but I don't like this, it's not a nice feeling. Krise is, is a crisis and Schaffen is doing something. You have a crisis in doing something. That's the translation. Yeah, as I said, I don't have a to-do list first. I have to drink a tea and then I have to think about myself. No, it's not like that. I'm just waiting until, until it's over, actually. I also paint and I, I also draw. I don't know. You have to ask me again when I'm in this Schaffenskrise, then I can tell you how it is. <laughs> Just my way of, you know, like reflecting the, what I'm interested in musically. Like, I, and, and I think with Berlin, when you first move here, if you don't really know that much about club music, it's a lot to learn. And, and, and there's so many layers here, and, and I think the listeners are very, you know, can be very sophisticated. I don't even like, you know, consider myself a performer necessarily, but uh, but it's it's great to just connect with people and, and I love like being, you know, giving that sort of energy to a crowd and, 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 and seeing what happens. Like I want tonight to be like a really fun, live, you know, you know, kind of intense show, you know, like uh, noisy and, and uh, people can have fun at our shows. So hopefully, hopefully tonight will be all right like that. iPhone, the recording device has been super helpful for me just because I can record ideas like when I was recording for comedy ideas and stuff those would pop up every now and then and then I could just record them in there or at least type them in and that was helpful to have around because paper and pen is sometimes a bit difficult. I'm trying not to hate too much you know it sounds so pathetic but it's a waste of time and hate is a strong feeling those hearts should show that um, there should be more love in this world. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I really mean that. I mean, it sounds so hippie, but yeah, fuck it. I mean, I'm trying to make the world a little better with my work, period. I can't say when. It just comes and then I'm creative and then I paint and then I draw. Sometimes when I'm in a gallery and I get inspired and I think, oh, I also want to paint right now. I actually have to go straight directly to my studio and paint, but yeah, sometimes it's not possible. Whew, okay, that's really a very difficult question. I just dare to, to enjoy. You know, without art, life would be boring. Fuck. That's not stupid, it's super hard. This question is super hard. Art is a way to describe things you can't describe with words, maybe. And some outcome 
which is needed to to keep yourself sane also <laughs> and also a way to touch other people with your personal perspective dude there would be so many answers on this <laughs> Art is much less important than life, but what a poor life without it. Thank you, Robert Motherwell. I decided to study art for me first. I just thought, okay, that's a very, that's a chance. And I should, I'm not sure now if I will be an artist like that and just paint and draw. That's right now the biggest thing for me and very important. And this is my passion, but I don't know what my future will look like. Right now. Well, creativity can be like dancing, you know? Sometimes people don't consider themselves as creative when they're dancing, but um, I think this is when you're really in the flow, you know? And you're able to... You're just responding, really. You're responding, which comes very naturally. And I think you can think of all creative work as a response. I like that. Hello. <laughs> is that art or is it garbage? Um, yeah, that's the question. 